Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Spur video. Going to have a look at the weather for next week's 10 days for today's Spur video. Day 10 will take us to the 17th of February and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Excelsior GFS and ECM ensembles. They run for a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets us into early March and I should get on with that for you in a moment. Just to save up first, a video save on 6 a.m. upload. And we've also uh, released the EC 30 day forecast as well. So please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on the vid. Thank you so much, everybody, um, for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. Right, going to start off with the situation at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the North Pole. So uh, temperatures have uh, reached around average um, now at 10 HPA, which is from the JMA. So we're a little bit above the grade line uh, today, but not all that far from it. So we're about average. Had a line of warming of the stratosphere last week, um, of course, at the end of January. And we're now back close to average at 10 HPA, going a little bit low down to 30 HPA. Uh, closer to the transfer, there we are colder than average now at around minus 75. Looking at the latest two GFS runs, starting off with midnight GFS, um, we can see that the uh, next few days going to keep quite cold temperatures at 10 HPA over the stratosphere. Then in around less than a week's time now, uh, a major warming takes place again over Siberia, pushing into uh, the North Pole sometime around the 14th, 15th of uh, February and uh, that carries on into World War II, 16th, 17th of February displacing the polar vortex at its roots um, more or less splitting the vortex there actually by 21st of February we've more or less split the vortex on this particular GFS run um, and another warming looks like it's a gather pace uh, uh, yeah another warming there need to get going over Siberia right at very end of that GFS midnight run this is our GFS 6 then is looking again much of a much is really the next significant warming of the strategy is starting around the 13th 14th of February over Siberia again it does penetrate into uh, the North Pole displacement of them of the uh, polar vortex out into the North Atlantic and into Northern Europe as well. It should be enough to send a zone of wind into uh, reverse. And again, it looks like it more or less splits the PV there, more or less splitting it um, sometime around the 20th, 21st of February. By which time, yet another warming gathering pace over Siberia. So just repeated uh, warmings going on at the moment. Quite unusual this. So we see these repeated warmings um, constantly coming uh, over Siberia. So it's so quite an unusual wing to this. Uh, ECM data came through last night, extended, so well, we could be seeing the live stream, but for anybody that didn't see the live stream, I'll just go through it in this uh, video very quickly. So, these are temperature anomalies, <coughs> excuse me, at 10 HPA over the North Pole. This is the week one temperature, temperature anomaly from 6th to 13th of February. So, um, displays the rate of polar vortex over the North Atlantic and Western Northern parts of Europe with warming uh, over on the Siberian side of the uh, Arctic. As we go through into week two, which is the 13th to 20th of February, that's when the major warming takes place. Could well be enough to send zone winds into reverse, which would be classified as a sun transport warming, continuing into week three, which is the 20th to 27th of uh, February. Week four seems that warming fading out a little bit, but still significantly more than average at 10 HP over North Pole, and then weeks 5 and 6, seeing a return of colder temperatures, especially over towards the Pacific side of the North Pole. But zone wind is being predicted to go into reverse by uh, the uh, ECM extended model. So this is the zone wind forecast starting off um, stronger than average with zone wind at the moment. Um, but if we get the zone wind under this uh, blue line I'm drawing here, then zone winds have gone into reverse, and you can see that the ensemble mean, actually, which is the thicker blue line there, that does uh, go underneath zero, so it does send the zone wind into reverse. Some of these ECM ensemble members are going for a major weakening of zone wind, going down to like minus 20, minus 30. Their outliers probably won't weaken that much, but definitely the ECM extended model, which came through last night, 
indicating that zombies are likely to reverse next week, which would be classified, therefore, as a genuine sudden stratospheric warming, SSW. So, um, what impacts that has, you know, we had to wait and see in, uh, in two, three weeks' time Probably like into end of February, beginning of March is when we would uh, start to look at, look at possible impacts uh, from this. So we shall keep you updated. Of course we will. Setting temperature, it continued to edge down, now sitting at 6.7, which is just under 3 degrees um, uh, three degrees uh, above average, after visual to the 6th of February. That will carry on dropping over the next day or two. We have got more frosty nights to come in the CT region. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Looking at Buxton today, so the red line into 30 year upper air temperature average for bucks and we are above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment because we've got an inversion going on across England Wales anyway which means it's uh, cold especially at night um, a little bit of a drop in the upper air temperature taking place about the end of the week and then they will lift back up again as we go through the weekend into the beginning of next week and that could turn genuinely mild across all parts of the country then through into the second half of February this period just here a um, lot of scatter looks generally like it's staying mild than an average but there are are a few colder ensemble members creeping in, especially those ones down there. However, I think overall we uh, are looking at quite a mild couple of weeks to come once we get these frosty nights out of the way through uh, the next couple of nights. Precipitation-wise, there'll be lots of dry weather over the next week up to mid-February, and then maybe starting to turn a little bit more unsettled. Uh, temperature normally is on the 7th to 15th February, going to be milder than average in most areas, closer to average down in the south, mildness up in the north, uh, precipitation anomaly, so the 7th to 15th February going to be drier than normal. Latest week from that from Earth, nullschool.net shows that we're under high pressure today, with southwest winds passing to our north and northwest. Um, the coldest weather is down in the south, mildness up in the north, closest to those southwesterlies. It's our latest uh, UK Euro run. It's looking for midnight on Friday. High pressure south, low pressure to the north. Into the weekend, high pressure ridging up across the country. We could get some uh, frost and fog down in the south end of that area of high pressure. But I think overall, it's probably quite cloudy and relatively mild. And then into next week, high pressure begins to slip towards Germany. And uh, that could keep things a little bit chillier in the far south and east, maybe again, with some frost and fog. Meanwhile, further north and west, we've got southerly southwesty winds. So should be relatively. Uh, mild there, maybe with quite a lot of cloud though. Icon again, high pressure south, low pressure north on Friday. The weekend at high pressure is ridging northwards across the country. Uh, early next week, high pressure starts to slip eastwards as lower pressure begins to get going in the Atlantic, starts to bring some wind and rain into the north and west, perhaps by this time next week. The GFS midnight run, um, once again, building that high pressure up through the uh, weekend into the early part of next week. Then moves it away as the lower pressure comes in from the Atlantic, turns more unsettled through next week. So, um, some wet and windy weather, especially to the north and west, in the course of next week. Still some high pressure influences, though, to our south. Notice uh, GFS midnight run is trying to raise pressure a little bit towards um, Scandinavia there. Into the extended range, turns a little bit stormy around the 19th of February, not sure about that, but basically low pressure keeps coming from off the Atlantic, but there is the idea that high pressure is lurking across the uh, west of Russia and into um, parts of the Baltic Sea areas, for example. So, we keep an eye on that, you know, that might be the first little hint of something beginning to happen in response to the uh, strap warming, possibly. GFS 6Z, uh, again, Building that high pressure up over the weekend into the early part of next week. Then begins to move away towards Eastern Europe. Looks mainly dry and settled for the south and eastern much of next week, I have to say. Lower pressure in the north and west will bring some cloud and rain there. Um, round day 10, you know, trying to turn and settle, but not really doing so convincingly. Um, and that's all as we get to the end of the GFS 6 run. Again, got high pressure to our east, low pressure to the west. So, so the, the scenario continues 
up to date. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe, you show us everybody uh, for doing that, and drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so very much, everyone, for doing that. We've reached 15.5k uh, just uh, last night, so thank you so much for getting us 15.5k. We're going to push on <laughs> to 15.6k uh, now. Thank you so much, everyone. GM, again, has a high pressure building up from the south. Uh, through next week, every lots of dry weather to most parts of the country. Next week seems to change something a bit more unsettled out to the northwest, but basically high pressure keeps the south mainly dry up to um, day 10 there. And then the ECM WF looking like this, high pressure uh, building up from south over weekend into over next week before slipping away, allowing low pressure in. The ECM turns much more unsettled by day 10 compared to all of the other model output, I think, looking genuinely unsettled there with low pressure in control uh, the 17th of February. Uh, based on precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tobetshow.com lots of dry weather to come over the next few days. There will be some rain and snow up in the far north though. Quite stormy winds actually um, tomorrow. After that high pressure is in the ascendancy until we get to around Valentine's and wet weather pushing across the country and that leads us barely to an unsettled spell of weather with showers all along the spells of rain, and it could be cold enough for some of that wet weather to turn to snow up in the north by day 10. Uh, I haven't got the options on the table in the ECM ensembles from the Isaac Metal today, however, we have got them from ECMDF.INT. So these are the options on the table within the ECM ensemble today from ECMDF.INT for the uh, 17th of February. 21 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure. At day 10, uh, to our north, high pressure is to the south. Winds coming in from off the Atlantic. That one looks quite unsettled, doesn't it? And then we've got uh, 18 members of the ECM on top of again with low pressure in the Atlantic. That's bringing uh, showing weather across the country. We've got 12 with high pressure, a little bit more dominant, sitting over and to the east. That could be the driest option, although even that one has some influence from the Atlantic. That's going to be the driest option and uh, probably brings up a mild southwesterly wind as well. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It will go to the 22nd of February. 18 members of the ECM Ensemble Zone have low pressure to our north. High pressure falling out into the Atlantic and towards Canada. Starting to send the jet stream and uh, wind flow alignment on a northwest south trajectory. So that's unsettled and turning a bit colder as well by uh, two weeks' time there. 15 members of the ECM Ensembles have us under... High pressure, so that to bring a lot of dry weather. Could be some frost and fog with that, although it's a relatively mild breeze. We are on the mild side of the jet stream there to our north, but there could be frost and fog and whatnot with that. We've got uh, 11 members of the ECM on top. Again, same idea as the first option high pressure pulling away from us in towards the middle of the Atlantic, lower pressure up to the northwest again. Could be bringing in a northwesterly wind with that, so perhaps quite cold and unsettled. And uh, then we've got seven members of the ECM on top, looking very messy, high pressure again, so pulling out into the Atlantic. Low pressure is up towards Greenland, but trying to raise pressure a little bit in the Norwegian Sea. So that's going in all sorts of directions, and um, you know, that could keep things relatively mild, it could turn things colder. Um, maybe that one is the first one that could be picking up on a bit of a stratospheric, uh, a, a bit of a tropospheric response to a strap warming, possibly. So this week, you finally meet the 500 middle bar high anomalies breaking down to week periods. The first week period takes from the 7th to 13th of February, coming dominated by high pressure. So lots of dry to come. Starting off quite cold south, then becoming milder. Week 2 will be the 14th, 20th of February, high pressure moving more towards Germany, about beginning to pull up. Uh, a southwesterly wind, so that should turn uh, mild with low pressure wave to the north and to the northwest. Week 3 brings low pressure through. It's the 23rd, 27th of February, low pressure in the North Atlantic. Winds coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean, turning unsettled there. And then week 4 is the 28th of February, 6th of March. High pressure then builds over to our east, low pressure out to west. Um, that's probably going to be quite mild for early March, but if that high pressure goes any further north, then we will start bringing in an easterly, which of course could be cold. It's four weeks away, so it's a long way out. We'll see. Time will tell. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And uh, don't forget to drop a comment. 
let us know what you think about this all of our videos. Thank you so very much. Don't forget to hit the bell to subscribe as well. And uh, we're going to push on from 15.5k to 15.6k next. Thank you so much, everybody. Right, that's it for today's uh, video. Today. Tomorrow, we're going to have 6am upload. We'll have the USA extended forecast. I'll be live streaming from 6pm. We'll live stream our 10 to 14 days. So I shall see you uh, for that one for uh, this week's, or for today's videos, I should say. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.